Hey everybody, well, welcome back to the channel. Today, what? we got we got a, a Scania brought in. One by, of a kind. Yeah, no, one of a kind. You came all the way to uh, to Canada to pick this thing up, Yeah, right? flew from Florida to Toronto last Friday, and then I went to a little town called Otterville, found this thing in a Dutch farmer's veggie barn, because he's a vegetable farmer. Okay. Where he actually had a little bit newer one there, but we won't talk about that one. <laughs> I was drooling over, and I bought this thing. All right. Well, we're gonna turn the camera around and we're gonna look at this beast right here and check this out. Bruce has got the, uh, the grill guard down and everything like that. And so we thought before we'd put that up and take it for a ride, we're just gonna kind of poke around in this thing a little bit. So let's turn the camera around, look at it. All right, Bruce, walk me around a Scania. This is, okay. <laughs> this is the first one. I'm not gonna say it's the first one I've seen because you know I've traveled to foreign countries, I've mm -hmm. seen them on the road, but this is the closest proximity that I've ever been to one. It Probably the first one in Tennessee. I bet. Yeah. I mean, hey, give me a plaque. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's freaking sweet. It's a 1997. Um, that's kind of all I know. All right. It's a 144. Uh, so it's a four series, 14 liter. Yep. V8 diesel. So V8. Very big thing there. 14 liter V8 diesel. That's, yep. that's a pretty big Manuel size. Manual transmission. Okay. Um, the four series is what they call it. Did I say that? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the gist of it. And I see the big V8 logo in the back there. Yeah, you can't miss it. They're very proud of the V8. So there, there's the infamous Scania logo there. The big Scania logo. So these are called Holdens from what I'm learning. It's Holdens. A Holden. That's, that's a Holden. Yeah, I think it's like something to do with uh, royalty or something. I'm not sure. Okay. Let me figure this thing out. There we go. So we opened it up because I haven't even got to see it open yet. I didn't okay. worry about it from the guy I bought it from. Pretty straightforward, dude. And but I'm seeing some big uh, some airbag contraptions here. Yeah. So this so, thing is. Go ahead. You, you already told you that. Yeah. 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 The 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 front of the cab has got air ride mounted on the front and rear. The whole so, cab is like floating on a cloud driving down the road. So it's not just like so in standard you know American trucks you get the pivot point on the front. And then you got the airbags on the rear, and that's how they achieve air ride. But this one actually has four corner air ride all the way around. It feels a little funky. I will tell you that. Like you take a turn, the whole cab like leans a little bit. Kind of shifts with you. When you're floating down the road, it's just like I don't yeah. know how to describe it. <laughs> it's really nice. So is it is it like a luxurious kind of feeling? Like once you get used to it, is it nice? Yes. Oh, it's man. definitely. It'll ruin you really fast. I, I can't wait to check that out. Now we did hit on something earlier. This truck is mega tall. Yes. It is way tall in consideration of like, you know, you got some trucks back there. I mean, I know they're not side by side, but still you can almost kind of tell this, this truck ends up quite a bit taller. Yeah, it's like right over like 13.2 to 13.4 roughly. That's what my other one was. I'm assuming this one's just as tall. So just the tip top up there? Yes. And you got big plans for this thing. You get, you're you're going to be doing big all kinds plans. of plans. <laughs> I know that sometimes I don't finish projects when I say they're going to get finished, but hey, the last couple weeks, I've been completing a lot of projects. Nice. So this one is going on the chopping block in like two to three weeks. Yeah. My plans are to basically, from this exact point right here, backwards, turn it into an American truck. Okay. So like American style, like shift fenders, like you guys put on a lot of trucks, like yep. you have on the Tratter Taxi, uh, big steel T-bars put on it. And we're gonna paint everything. Nice. Blue. Blue. So, so the I'm truck's sure, not gonna be white anymore. No. Oh. <laughs> Which is funny because let's show them on the front up here because we, we, we kind of noticed it might have had some blue in its. I thought the life. truck was originally red, but it was originally blue and then it was painted red because you can feel the step there. Yep. And now it's white. So it's already got some American blood in it. There's <laughs> red, white, and blue. It's yes. got it. So I want to paint it blue. We're going to work with your brother Rob over there at the Collision Center, because yep. you told your viewers about his YouTube channel he started up. I'm Absolutely, sure, right? yeah. So yeah, what well. better way to break him into the YouTube world than doing a collab with him, we get this thing painted blue. No, that'd be super cool. Yeah, they've, they've been doing a lot of really cool YouTube work over there. Yeah. Like the, the quickness in which they turn around a collision <laughs> is insane. I mean, they take a truck that is completely destroyed and make it look brand new in seven days. So <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing this thing's I don't know this, about seven days, but I mean, I mean maybe. Who knows? For oh, me, for this. Yeah, I don't know if this one's going to be seven days, but that's what they're doing with those Cascadias over there. So I like the term obliterated because that's what some <laughs> of the trucks look like that they get. Yeah, it's, it's pretty just, rough. It's like, is that even a truck anymore? And then it's brand new rolling off the it, yeah. assembly line over there. 
it, it's it's pretty crazy that the stuff they're doing but all right let's get back to the scania so yep. you said we could drive this today right yes so let's do a quick walk around um we noticed we noticed some different things about this so in the back of it there's you know we'll, we'll, let's start the front before we close it because i want to point oh, okay. something out okay, okay. all right so all right we love Peterbilts, yeah. no, hands down, no doubt about that. Yeah, right? yeah, we got Peterbilts sitting everywhere. You look underneath everywhere. the hood of a Peterbilt, right? There's things kind of running everywhere, but there's an organization to it, Yeah. right? These, everything has its exact home. Yep. Like if you look underneath, it looks super complicated, but you can see where like certain hoses are made specifically for certain bins and yep. like everything is made is like engineered, I guess would be the word for it, right? Yeah. Um, so that's underneath the hood without opening the cab up. You can kind of see that's a pretty big difference compared to the American trucks. So yeah. Lots of lots of preformed and yes, and there like you go. made aluminum and rubber pieces <laughs> <laughs> lines. Something I learned the hard way with my other truck. All these airlines are metric. So instead of a half inch airline, it's yeah. a twelve millimeter airline. Uh. So I've got a whole box of metric quick connects from other trucks that yeah, kept so breaking. Cause this is my second scan. Yeah, I've got a clunker at home. This one was actually nice. So engineering, right? Engineering. I saw that. So earlier I was like, all right, well, how do I get to the step? And I thought maybe you open the door and then you kick it down, but no. Something else I learned too, right? So you're thinking like, man, those mirrors are way up there. Yeah. How do I claim a mirror? So you hold your step. And then you just and then you can get up or... here and do what you need to do and then when you open it it just kind of re-engages it resets ah well there it is pretty cool little that little is that is a cool little tidbit there but uh yeah steps up into the palace <laughs> this is the coolest part i'm wondering do we keep this style like interior yeah. for when we do the interior up. yeah you got to keep that on there oh you definitely yeah but i mean that's like what is that called suede it's maybe? like a suede yeah yeah it's got a bunk bed up top okay so it's like a twin size bed there yeah behind the seats is another coffin bed i guess you'd call it maybe okay. similar to like a, just enough for you to do this yeah um storage here big thing we did we talk about the engine you always said it, the engine okay we, we said it was a v8 but we've not taken a 14 liter not taking a peek at that. Can't I mean, really see much. A <laughs> little, little hard to see back here, but there is a V8 diesel somewhere in there. Big thing to point out, transmission is synchronized like a car. So yep. like you're eating fuller transmissions and stuff like that, and your Peterbilts, you float the gears, you double clutch it. Yep. This, you have to use the clutch every single time to shift. Every single shift. Yes. But what, what transmission is in it? Is this a... It's a Scania transmission. I know, but is it a 10 speed? 13 speed. 13 speed. So it has a high and low range like your normal, right here's your high and low. Okay. Which currently doesn't work. It only has high range. I got, only I has got, high I got range. parts on my other truck to fix it. But you have a high and low there and then you have a splitter for each gear right there. Okay. So synchronized transmission, kind of a big thing because there's no such thing as that here in America. No, no, uh, not, not in the trucking world. They so don't, it's super do easy to learn to shift on one of these too because you're not trying to not, yeah, float not, and match gears every time. Yeah, you don't have to float it the same way like, you know, with the, the big trucks. All right, so suspension hangers, you know, we noticed this kind of right off the rip earlier, is the suspension hangers are quite a bit beefier and the bolts are quite a bit smaller, but yes. they use a lot more bolts putting the, the suspension hangers on. Fuel tanks. Huge fuel tanks. Big, and I think the reason being is like, and I've never been out of the country like Tommy here, going to in a couple weeks, but like you're traveling across multiple countries and I think it has something to do with different fuel prices. I don't know, who knows? Yeah, well, you know, that makes sense. I mean, well, and on top of that, you know, a lot of a lot of countries you're traveling in and out of, you're going in, in and out of remote areas. I mean, I can imagine Sweden going through the mountains. I mean, you might go, you might go hundreds and hundreds of miles yeah. without seeing a fuel station, right? I'm gonna find out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, big, huge fuel tanks on both sides. Yeah, massive fuel tanks. And they're square, they're not. You know, we couldn't Round. find a tag on these, but just by mine and Brian's estimation, we were thinking it's gotta be 200 gallons a piece at least. A lot. So at 200 gallons a piece, you got 400 gallons of fuel capacity. How many liters is that? <laughs> I, I'm not even gonna guess. <laughs> not even gonna try. So it's got a powered front axle and a lift rear axle, obviously. Yep. So dummy axle back there, which is pretty crazy because it's like a whole axle tube back there that just doesn't yeah. have a chunk in it. Yeah. 
most of your lift axles are like not like that here in America either. There's so. there's there's quite a few fleets that are working their way towards this. I've seen some they, of those floating down the road. The yeah, gas trucks usually. Yeah, they've started doing this, and uh, you know, um, I, I think it was Mercer Transportation. They did a big experiment with this, primarily because all your fuel mileage is lost in your power divider. Mm -hmm. Like once you go to a single axle, you pick up two miles to the gallon, and That's so, a lot. oh, it's oh, it's a bunch. And so there was a lot of fleets that started experimenting with that and um, never really sure what, what ended up happening with I've it. I've seen but. some floating down the road on yeah. my travels. And like when I put this axle down just with driving it here, yep. you could feel the axle you know, catch the next bump. Yeah. This would absorb most of it, but this absorbed it too. So with it up, it rides way better. So I remember back in the day, uh, the first time diesel fuel hit like $5 a gallon, it was like in the early 2000s, whenever that happened, that got really big really fast. People started going single axle with lifts. Yeah. And it, it, it started happening really quick. Well, it's like all the rotating mass too, you don't need to worry about. Yeah. I'm not saying that's a lot, but I mean, it's something. It is, it's something. So that's so. the gr biggest thing difference. And these rear ends are massive. I mean, they're like huge. Yeah. It's kind of hard to see in there, but. And you said the uh, the frame rail width it's, is. It's like, four or five inches narrower yeah, than so US. Like, like from this side to this side, a lot more narrow. And I think it's because they run a much larger tire. Like, so we have trucking people that watch your, this is a 315 80 22.5. Oh yeah. So that's usually a tire you would run on like the front of a truck with a heavier steer axle. Yeah, exactly. But they're running them on the rear drives, which leads the actual wheels to be wider. Yeah, well, wheels are wider. Than your normal aluminum Alcoa's dually style wheels, or tandem duals, so. All right. That's kind of the gist of it. I mean, something cool about the V8s is uh, for the sound of the exhaust, which will give them some revs outside, it sounds really crisp and really unique. Yeah. If you kind of see in here with it, Tommy, that where they, <laughs> the exhaust gets pretty crazy. So it comes out the turbo, goes down one side of the frame, comes back up, back down again, and then out. Wow. And the reason they do that is like the V8 like crackles more the more turns and the length it gets. Yeah. And it sounds really cool. So they did it specifically for, for the sound. The resonation. Yes. Nice. Well, I can see all the piping. <laughs> and it's a 97, so the frame's in great shape. Oh yeah. No, I mean the truck is in really good shape. So you bought a 97 because of import export laws in the United States. You can't get in a truck that's less than 25 years old, right? Correct. So you can get anything in that it's at least 25 years old. They don't ask questions about DOT regulations, EPA regulations, anything. Well, it sounded like they asked a couple of questions. Yes. You tried to come yeah. across. <laughs> as far as like having the, the import documents, as far as like being booked with certain agencies, but as far as like yep. checking labels, none of that happens when it's at least 25 years old. Oh, okay. And I got lucky to find one in Canada. Most of them in Canada are newer because Canada's law, it only has to be 15 years old to go into Canada. Ah. So finding this one was like, it may be the only one there that was actually for sale or that I know of, honestly. Nice. So. And so now you've got like two out of like maybe five Scanias in the <laughs> yes. entire United States. Talk about being unique, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean you're just going to collect these things. Huh? <laughs> All right, give me another little revy here. All right, first reaction of our exhaust sounds. Oh, we're getting soot on your big canvas. <laughs> oh, jeez. I think it does sound pretty neat. It's like, it sounds like a V8. I mean, it is a V8. So, I had a long time ago, when I had like my tow and stuff going on, I had an old Chevrolet, like a 95 or something, with a 6.5 six five five in yeah. it. And it, it has that kind of clunky noise to it. Oh, I got him. <laughs> I'm just. I'm so, <laughs> <laughs> so, are you saying I got a clunky 6.5 in this thing? It sounds a little beefier. All right, Brian. Cool. We're gonna back this thing out. You gonna go drive it? Yeah, will you get the door? Yeah. Let's go for a ride, Bruce. Let's go. Okay, so we're in the Scania. Got the V8 logo back there behind Brian. Oh yeah. There's a way to turn on more lights in here somehow. I more know. lights. More lights. See, hold on. One of these turns on something Wait, there's else. there's switches everywhere. Yeah, there's lots of switches that don't do some stuff and do do stuff. Ooh, yeah. There's 
is that? I don't know what that yeah. does. Oh, that's that's your uh, that's your rotating on beacon. Top. Yeah, the, the other uh, one I'm looking for is right here somewhere. <laughs> on the road, the beacon lights are going. <laughs> Couple of Yahoos in the scan, yeah. Don't worry about us. We can turn traction control off. Gosh, yeah, there's oh, yeah, switches everywhere. One of these turns these on. Don't crash. Hey. All right, you wanted to talk about how trippy it is, right? The side to side. Yeah, yeah. Now you were you were oh, giving wow. it a little bit there. <laughs> Look at Brian. <laughs> That's very little over. steering wheel movement too. That's just. The air, because it's four bags. It's just the cab move, the chassis's not so much. Yeah, it's yeah. all the airbags on the cab. Because oh, it it's, weird. yeah, to reiterate, it's four corner air Airba ride. Yes. Yeah. So there's air ride on the front, too. He's well, super smooth right now. Very smooth. The only thing I would do is maybe put sway bars on the cab. Right. <laughs> but yeah. It feels so weird. But man, if you were on like a bunch of rough roads, I bet this thing is like pretty oh. nice. I bet it'd be super nice. And now I've never been to Europe. You've been to Europe. And the roads there are pretty. I don't know where you're going. Uh, they get pretty them, bad. Some of them would be bad. Some some of them are bad. Uh, but like the big thing is most of them are just really small. Mm. Like they don't have big roads in Europe. They have really small roads. Pretty it's, smooth. It yeah. sounds really good. And it, like, the power comes in smooth, too. Yeah. All right, so, Brian, overall review here. This uh, thing has, like, equivalent of 700,000 miles on it. Yeah. Uh, Actually, a little bit more than that, but yes. It's pretty impressive. I mean, the, everything in the side of this cab is pretty tight. It rides really nice right now. And it gets out of its own way really well. For a yeah. 1997, yeah. 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 And this is not even like the considering most horsepower you can get right now. No. They offered it another 40 more horsepower, 50 more horsepower, something like that, yeah. Yeah, not your model. Yeah. Do you know what the dash reminds me of? Like, uh, early, early 90s, like, camper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It totally goes like Because it's got the backup, the backup thing. I need a backup TV, though, not a backup LCD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if it worked, it's got a couple quirks. The high low isn't working, so we only have high range, but low range is really low. Yeah, super. Um, it also has what's called a retarder. So these don't have jake brakes. They have retarders is what they're called okay. because they're right there on the dash, so people know. Um, and what that is, it's actually built into the back of the transmission like a PTO would be. Yeah. And it uses hydraulic valves to put force against the transmission turning. Nice. Slow the truck down. Yes. Kind of like a, a hydraulic or a water dyno. Yeah, yeah. But it's on the truck. And this applies pressure it to it. like an eddy brake or something. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, and whenever, like the other one, my other truck works and it will slam you through the dash. Like, really? It's like applying the brakes on your foot without applying with your foot. Nice. So, no Jake brakes, but... No Jake brakes, but that's got to be good for, like, the wear and tear of the engine, right? Because Jake's, Jake's do have, you know, an ultimate overall effect on the engine. Yeah. So, having, the, like, a hydraulic brake kind of on the transmission, it, like... And I'm uh, not... I would, I would think that's got to help overall longevity on the, on the engine, right? I would assume so. I'm not well-versed quite yet. All right, so we want to hit, like, a mediocre rough area here? Sure. Yeah. Y'all are giving her a good test here. Yeah. All right. Man, that's a, got that's a got some bumps. No way. I kind of just went right over. I mean, this is pretty rough. <laughs> this is very. You wouldn't. You wouldn't do this in a conventional truck. No, no, we wouldn't. We wouldn't have done that in the in the Peterbilt. Wow. We're just out here off roading in Tennessee in the Scania. <laughs> <laughs> that was like. That was legit. That was smoother than my pickup truck would have taken it. I think. Way smoother than a Dodge. Give me a break. Listen, don't start knocking a Dodge. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Brian, you, how much confidence you got in this? You think it's going to work? I mean, you're sitting in the back. Well, I'll be the first one out. <laughs> <That's insane. laughs> this windshield's not hard to find, not easy to find, so you better not crack it with your noggin there, bud. All right, well, I'll switch seats. All right, now you're driving my baby. <laughs> now he's in the my only ride seat. home. Your only ride home. I mean, unless I got to take another Peterbilt home, you know. The shifter's different, right? You're good that way. That guy's turning.
Yeah. <laughs> We're like in the ditch. <laughs> like, get on the road. I'm like, because I, I have to watch the mirror over here yeah. and try to figure out where we're at on the yellow line. That's my problem when I drive the Pete and I'm like over the line because I'm so used to being on it while I'm driving. The, but you're right. The shift pattern is weird because it's like one, two on the bottom side. So you're like one, two, yeah. and then you go up for three and then back for four. four yeah. It's definitely different. Wow, man. This thing, this, this drives so weird because... The transmission is solid, but I can feel the cab moving. So when you put your hand on here, it feels like the transmission's moving, but it's the cab. Yeah, the, the shifter's mounted on top of the engine, basically. Yeah. Now, steering's got a little bit of play in it, but 700,000 miles, you know. Yeah, well. I don't think anything's ever been replaced, so don't, don't judge a little sweetheart here too much. I, I'm not judging. This is actually really, really smooth. I'm watching both mirrors to try to figure out where the truck is in the road. I'm way farther that way than I think I am. Okay. I'm so nervous like when I drive like A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be nervous for you too. So we're not worried about high and low because it doesn't work. Okay. And I brought you a broken truck. But so feel that. Yes, yeah, your normal your normal shift area, just like a regular P, right? Yep. So pull it all the way over hard. It's like that's your like reverse is forward. Got the handled over there. So clutch in, pull it all the way over and backwards. Get it. You, 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 you get it. There you go. All right, now release <laughs> your brake. It'll pull up. Turn the headlights on because it's dark now. Oh, oh no! Put that back where it was. The knob, the round knob. Nope. Got some mirrors. He's doing this on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Are you nervous yet? Yes. <laughs> okay, so just go across, just take it wherever and have another rush. I gotta remember to push the clutch in. Yep. <laughs> so strange. Ah, uh, you're in high gear. I went to high? Yeah, bring it over one. There you go. Clutch. There you go. Oh, there it is. Hey, we found it. <laughs> this is so weird. And it's straight forward the next year? Over. I'm going to shift it with you, but there you go. Okay. All right, we made it through the gears. That's all of them? No, there's one more. Pull that's, straight back. That's high. It's so floaty. It's, yeah. it's such a cool feel, though, right? Make sure you check your mirrors, like, because we are right on the white line over here. <laughs> all right guys that's it for this video bruce thank you for bringing this machine <laughs> for us to drive <laughs> but we drove it around we got brian in the truck and brian uh scared us half to death that yep. was kind of fun no problem yep <laughs> so are you happy with it i'm beyond happy with it i can't wait to tear into it and like not finish another project. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you got big plans for this thing, and it's going to be really cool seeing it around the, the circuit, like, once it's all said and done. Uh, me and Brian are excited to, to check it out again, drive it again once you get high and low gear fully uh, yeah, well, functioning. functioning. It's going to be a head turner, no doubt. Yeah, for sure. So, I'm pumped. All right, well, guys, hope you liked the video. If you guys want to see more content like this, you got to like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, at Semi Casual Show. Also, Check out Bruce Wilson's YouTube channel, Bruce Wilson. I think it's just Bruce Yeah, just Wilson. Bruce Wilson. Also, I'm gonna plug it, our blue collar cab over semi truck. Uh -huh. We're giving away. Yes. And you can go to brucewilsonshop.com to get her to win and check out all the details there. You could win a whole semi truck. A whole semi truck. Not just any semi truck though. It's a very the... well known semi truck that we've got to drive on this channel before. It was blue collar and it's- Still blue collar the cab over, so. It's, yeah, I mean Freightliner. it's- very, very well-known cab over. You guys could own that. You just got to go to brucewilson.com. Bruce Brucewilsonshop.com. We're rebuilding it. the engine of this next coming week, too. So lots of cool content. So it's not just like a truck. You're, you're getting gonna a be, full overhaul. It's ready to rip. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, that makes it even better. Who knows? One day we'll be up here getting a new Peterbilt from you to give a giveaway with. I'm hoping so. Yeah, we, we've <laughs> talked about it so many yeah. times. We just need to build one, design one, and then do that. But Who knows what the future holds? Who knows? All right. Guys, see you next time.